Well, I don't think the snowblower is supposed to look like that. Well, it's going to take me a little bit to get the driveway blown out. So I'm going to walk back into the shack and I'm going to get a fire going and hopefully by the time I can get the van back to the shack, it'll be a little bit warmer in there. It's really nice out today. It's like mid twenties. So this would be our kind of our January thaw. Lots of deer tracks through here. It's nice to see. Oh, the porch is nice and dry. Coming in, dogger. It's worked out pretty well, don't you think? Are you ready to go home? Just like I left it. Oh, the bed hasn't fallen over, so that's a good sign. All right, let's get that fire started and get that driveway blown out. Oh, I'm gonna go out and blow snow for a couple hours or for an hour or so, and we're gonna see how warm it is when we come back in. Definitely need, gonna need to get that snow off the roof this trip. That's for sure. What? I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you. You goofer. You goofball. You goofball. <laughs> what are you doing? You, what are you doing? You goofer. <laughs> you goofball. All right, we got work to do. We can play later. That's not, I'm not off to a good start. The snowblower has stopped uh, blowing snow out of the chute. And uh, obviously it's a belt issue. Um, I don't know if it's that the belt has just stretched. Recently I had the same issue and there was a war part inside where there was a pin. And I had to completely disassemble the blower front from the motor and um, I really don't want to have to do that out here in the dark, in the cold, but I'm afraid I may have to do that. The problem is I don't have a part to fix it. So the last time I just took up some slack on a, on a pin by putting some tape on it and that uh, gave just enough uh, friction for the pin to hold. I'm a ways from the cabin still. Um, I mean, worst comes to worst, I could shovel my way in. I've done that before, but it will take hours. That's how far I've got blown out. That's how close I am to the cabin. There's maybe eight inches of snow on the ground, but I have a two wheel drive van and only half a tank of gas. So I'm not super heavy right now. And I have a trailer on the back. So I'm tempted to try to bust through to get to the cabin. I'm pretty much guaranteed to get stuck. And that's gonna cause me to have to shovel out and get aggravated and whatever else. And of course, I'm not gonna be able to rock myself out because I have the trailer on it. But all my tools and everything else are in here and it's closer to the cabin. All right, this is gonna be a mistake. I know this already. This makes no sense, Terry. Why are you even considering this? Well, the problem is that little slot right there where that pin goes, that hole is war. So it doesn't put quite enough tension on there. So when you depress the belt tensioner, it doesn't move over enough to get all the tension on the belt. That, and I'm sure the belt is, is way loose. But the problem is I have to take this whole thing off to get to that. Doggone it. And I don't know where I could get that belt today. 
Now I know what you guys are thinking. Ah, that's never gonna work. And you know what, you're probably right. But if it does work, then I'm a genius, aren't I? Well, I don't think we need to worry about that. And I'm sitting in the snow. I can feel it wet and cold behind me. Oh no, don't drop that pin. Do not drop that pin. Do not drop that pin. Do not drop that pin. Oh, she wants to. Alright, will that be enough? No, it's not enough. The belt is just too stretched. The belt is just too stretched. Well, I'm gonna see if I can get it to work a little bit, just to, oh, shoot. Get the van back here. If not, I'm off for shoveling, I guess. I was able to move it about six inches at a time and then I'd have to stop and let the chute clear out of snow but I think I've got the tire tracks opened up enough where at least I can get the van back to the, the cabin Whew. and I'm gonna just have to deal with it tomorrow um, but I'm cold and I need to warm up I didn't really have warm clothes on so here we go get ready gonna slow down there's actually about a foot or better I was thinking 8 to 10 but no clearly there's more than that okay well at least we got back this far so I can at least get stuff unloaded and... oh man what a day so far well we got in from outside and unfortunately the snowblower is still not working very well so I wasn't able to clean up the yard and park the van where I normally do. So I think unfortunately tomorrow I'm probably going to have to run to town and try to find a belt. Uh, I feel like I'm able to get that tensioner pulley working but the belt is so stretched out that I'm just going to have to replace that. But at least I was able to get the van up to the door so I was able to get everything unloaded. So it's come up to about 60 degrees now in here. Morning everybody. Oh, the chickadees are out. Well, first things first this morning. I'm pretty concerned about how much snow is on the roof of the porch and the cabin. Now, I didn't bring a roof rake up and I wouldn't use one anyway because I wouldn't want the metal to scratch the coating on the tin roof and then have it rust later. So, I have an idea. Let's see if it works.
One down, one to go. As you can see on the porch where there's no heat source, the snow just slid right off, but over the cabin where it's warm and heats up the middle, <clears throat> there's just a little bit of ice and it just gives enough traction for the snow just to hang on. Well, I feel much better having that done. There was a lot of weight on that roof, but we better go get that tool shed done before that collapses. I mean, after all, I built that, I built the roof might not be the strongest roof in the world. Well, I suppose I better get about 165 pounds of snow off of here before I climb up. Fine, 190 pounds. Just to give you guys a little perspective, here's the cabin, the driveway, the entrance road is out that way, fire pit, and then normally there's a trail in here and this goes back to my deer feeder and then if you go this way that's the south stand and if you go this way that's the north stand. Well my helper was down here holding the ladder while I was climbing up and down, but the first sign of a squirrel and he forgot about old dad. So I got myself into a little bit of a pickle. Not a bad one, but when I pulled in here last night and couldn't get the, mower, the blower going again, it didn't dawn on me that now I can't back up and get out of here. So I have to go to town in order to get a belt for the blower. But in order to go to town, I got to move this trailer somewhere and I can't move the trailer somewhere without a blower because I can't get it turned around or unhooked off the thing to turn the van around. So sure, I can back the van out, but not with a trailer behind it. So I've been shoveling, trying to make enough space for the trailer. Watch out there, dog -o Room. Don't worry. At least the snow's fairly light. Well, I don't think the snowblower is supposed to look like that. But that's what you got to do to get this doggone belt off. So, what I need to do is run to town, see if I can get a new belt, one that's not all stretched out. All right, well, I think Rivy and I are gonna go in and make some brunch, and then we're probably gonna to head to town. Lots to do, but so much of it depends on getting some workspace blown out. All right, we're gonna go get something to eat and go warm up. What do you think? River's been chasing squirrels all day, haven't you? You've been on high alert.
by mixing it with your food, or do you want it like this? I know what we forgot. Hot sauce. We forgot to have hot sauce. Well, this is not going well. This is not going well at all. Now I just broke the bottom floor pan of this, trying to put this stupid thing back together. Tell you what, this is not my weekend. It's been trouble, trouble the whole time. Nothing's been going right. Nothing has gone right yet. Oh my gosh, I think it's a friggin' miracle. I actually got three bolts in. And the belt seems tight, so that is like huge, like it's tighter than it's been um, as long as I can remember. But you know, this mower is probably over 20 years old, or blower is probably over 20 years old. And I don't know if I've ever changed the belt on it, just because it's never been, it's never been worn, you know, and it's never broke, so I've made adjustments to tighten it, but, but I've never replaced it, which is on me. It probably should be just part of normal maintenance when you change the oil. So, yeah, shame on me, right? Lessons learned. you guys later you want to see something beautiful blue sky feels like forever since I've seen the Sun in a nice blue sky give me five that's not five that's 20 <laughs> Goofball. I'm thinking about putting the grill in the in the porch because to kind of keep it protected I wouldn't want to do that in the spring or summer though because the bear would just tear through the porch to get it. Well, one of the gals that I work with, she watches the channel and she's seen me struggle starting a fire once in a while. So she uh, made me this, these, this fire starter kit and she just used an egg carton in each egg holder is an individual uh, fire starter so I thought that was uh, really nice and thoughtful of her she obviously put a lot of work into this for me so what uh, she did was she took dryer lint and she impregnated it with wax and she said that it'll start really well so normally I would use it inside but I'm not so sure I wouldn't take some of these and put them in like a ziploc and you know, take them as kind of an emergency source or something. But anyway, I'm going to give it a try in the outdoor fire tonight um, and, and see what happens. You know, with lint, lint is fairly, fairly uh, flammable. So if you had a lighter that didn't even have any fluid in it, and this one does, but even just using the spark, there's a really good chance you'd be able to get a flame out of this. So let's see if I can do it without hitting the gas. I don't know if I can or not, but... Ooh, wow. Do you see how quick that was? Holy smokes. I mean, that was like, I barely touched it and that went. Okay, but I'm obviously not ready. I didn't expect it to be that good, <laughs> to be honest. Um, let's see if we can get, keep it going. That wax really uh, keeps it going too, actually. So I'm, I'm pretty impressed. Connie, you uh, obviously put a lot of work into that. I appreciate that. That was very thoughtful of you. Now let's see if I can get this going. Wow, that, I'm, I'm really impressed actually. That was like, right now. I mean, yeah, that was good. So I think what the plan is, I'm gonna get a little fire going here and get that grill started. And I think we're gonna do a little grilling tonight. Wow, 
started first try. All right, well, we got heat. That's a good. good sign. Nights like tonight, we got the grill going, got a fire going. Reminds me of the early days before I had a cabin, before I could stand up, before I could get warm when I wanted to. Spent a lot of nights camping in the van and the coldest I ever slept was down to about zero degrees, but I had to use my little buddy heater then. But at night I would sleep at five degrees with just extra sleeping bags and blankets and, and I'd be fine. The van always stayed a little bit warmer. But today I was getting frustrated about nothing going right. And everything I touched today, every project I started, nothing went right. And everything was just, ugh, frustration, frustration. And again, you know, I, I didn't get near the projects done today that I wanted to do. And then when I, when I was sitting here listening to the quiet and the crackle of the fire and the crackle of the meat on the grill, it made me thankful how far I've really come, you know, that now I have this cabin with a wood stove in it and I can walk in there in five minutes and it's going to be 70 degrees and I can take off all my warm clothes and sit down at a table and share some space with my best dog, River. So there's always something to be grateful for and, you know, I'm just really thankful to have this place and sometimes it seems like I'm never making any progress, but looking back over the last couple of years, I've come a long ways. It hasn't always been easy and certainly have no idea what I'm doing, but if I would have never started, if I would have never taken a chance, wouldn't be here today. We better check that meat. It sounds like it's cooking. Whoa, 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 that's not what I wanted to see. That's not what I wanted to see. Give that pork a few minutes and then we're going to call it good. Turns and bundling up for another long Northland winter. Here at Life 97.3, we've got the hope you need to keep going through it all. Positive and uplifting. Life 97.3. Is that good? So I'm getting ready to move on to the next project, which is the solar installation. And I just found out that I have more trouble. So I put this outlet in as a 120 or 110 and this I put in as a 12 volt charging receptacle uh, so you could do like USB or a plug and this was working when I put it in and also I ran some wires in the ceiling up there I don't know if you can see them there they, there they are I ran some wires in the ceiling up there for track lighting and unfortunately not only are those ones not working but this one in the very back that was working before is no longer working as well, that outlet. Somewhere along the line, I have a splice that is pulled apart. Um, this wire right here is my 120 outlet wire, and this one is connected to all the outlets. And the outlet wire from there is one continuous line all the way up to either here or in here, and then it was spliced into this one which came from the opposite end. Unfortunately, or fortunately, the one outlet over here is working, which tells me, I don't know what it tells me. All I know is it tells me is I have big trouble and I cannot continue with the solar until I figure out where my open end is because if I have an open hot somewhere in the wall and I introduce solar to it, I don't want to start a fire. I don't even know if it could start a fire. I would guess it would if it's 110. So obviously that's a problem. Um, so what I have to do, first of all, is tear apart this wall uh, and check the wires behind it and see if it's just real close in here. And plan B is to tear apart this section of the wall in here 
because this would have been the second logical place that I would have spliced it because of the outlet. So once again, the theme for the weekend is nothing has gone right so far. So I'm going to put a hold on this for right now and I'm going to move on to the bed project and see if I can tighten that up. You guys left me tons of good ideas. Probably the item that was most mentioned by people was putting some sort of uh, X bracing in there. Uh, the second one was just running some lag bolts through the outside of the, the post. And then the third one was, which I thought was pretty good, was running wires with eye bolts and using turnbuckles to tighten them up on each other in an X pattern. So I think I'm going to start with the least intrusive way first, and that is with some big long log screws and see if I can come in from the outside into that rail stud and see if I can tighten it up that way. If that doesn't work, I'm moving on to plan B, which is probably uh, putting some more 2x4 bracing in there. So. Might as well get that started. Let me guess, I'm not going to have the right size bit for this screw. Are you kidding me? <sighs> Maybe I have one in the truck. Well, I have no idea what an F10 is, but I think that's what they're trying to say this bit is for. Um, and I don't think I have an F10. I'm going to try this one. But I don't think this is going to work. This one didn't fit quite right. Ooh! Every single thing this weekend! Ah. Alright, back to the drawing board. Alright, well this is plan B. This isn't exactly an X brace, but um, actually I should loosen these up this one. Yeah, that helps a lot actually. Well, I didn't make the X, which maybe I should have, but my 2x4s weren't long enough. I think this is just going to have to work for now. I've already resigned myself to the fact that when summer comes, I'm going to make a whole new bed, which I was kind of planning to anyway. Um, and then I will do it right, and then I will put the beams instead of these rails that are just screwed to each other. They will have a post and beam that will um, actually fit into each other and be glued and screwed. So. That's the plan, and in hindsight, I think I would make it a little bit lower, even though I want to put totes under here. I think uh, having it right in the middle creates just too much of a, of a seesaw, teeter-totter, kind of the leverage point is right in the middle, and um, I could probably lower this headboard a little bit as well, and that would maybe help. Anyway, it's going to be good enough for now, and we're going to go from there. So that's, we're going to just call this project done for now until summer and, and carry on. Well, it's that time again, time to hit the road. Hopefully I'll be up in another couple weeks and uh, continue work on that solar installation. Until then, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon. On today's episode, we're adding solar to the off-grid cabin.